Uh, in today's sessions, we're going to continue what we started in part two, is building up the employee recording of their assignment. And we finished so far with the dim people. We finished with the dim dead. Please watch those videos. And we get into the last part, which is really creating the fact table and then combining those two together. One more thing, we, as I mentioned before, we have also, if you remember in the raw data, we have also the tasks. At the task, we're going to combine the category column inside that our, our table, uh, which we're going to turn into a fact table. And from the people we created already, the DIM people, and we created the, uh, the dead, the DIM dead. In other words, we're going to end up with those three tables, which are going to be our data or compare data or process data for creating reports. We'll definitely will create many other columns and special columns to make wise reports. But stage number one in the ETL process, uh, it's really finishing those three to work as a mini cube. So let's go and focus on this one this time. Uh, I'm opening the SSMS and we're going to watch to look a second for the table that we mentioned before, the month. The month has, as I said, it's a combined three tables uh, for January, February, and March. And uh, we already have created a DIM people. So we will have to change this one to have a primary key as we have in the table in the, in the DIM people. The DIM people has a primary key. So we'll have to make sure it will be the same one. Then we can get rid of this. Kind of. Some things about the date. We have the date of the reporting. We don't really want to keep a date because that will be very slow. So we want to replace the column of the date to be also primary key. And we already have done the hard work, which is we have a dim date and the dim date have a primary key for every day. So we're going to convert this one also to be a, a, a primary key for, uh, that matches the one from the dim date. How do we do it? So I prepared, again, I prepared for you uh, a file that have everything in it. And it says factHours.sql. You can download it, double click on it, and it will open up in the SSMS. Uh, here we go, this is the file. And again, this is already look familiar. It will make sure that everything I'm doing going to my, my process database, uh, you should change Amos to your team, that one I mentioned already. And here is the table. If you look at the table, I already kind of copied almost all the columns in the original hours table. The only things that I added, it's uh, up to here, it's all the stuff that they are already in the original table. So just basically creating similar columns. What I did change, or I added more quality to say, I added those three columns for a reason. The first one I'm going to have the primary key of people. Okay. Uh, after I'm putting this one, I can really get rid of this column. I don't really need it. For now, I'll keep it just for references. But really, we shouldn't really keep it there, especially not in something that's supposed to be effective. Okay. Same things. It's true for the primary key for the date. This one is going to really replace the date because this one definitely is not going to be any index in this table. Otherwise, it will not move. So we will get rid of those ones later on, or we'll see. But for now, the most important thing is to add those two to combine or to connect with them the two dimensions that we just created: the dim people and the dim date. Finally. The category, it's going to hold the information that we have in the task, in the task table. And let me see, yeah, here we go. The task table, I don't really need to drag it. There's no real reason for that unless I really want to do 
analysis by this one, which I'm not sure for now. Uh, but I can really add this column to be part of the uh, kind of the, the, not kind, but the fact table. Uh, if I want to do analysis by the categories, I might consider as turning it into a, turning it into a dimension by itself. And that we can make decisions later on. For now, we just want to make one step. And the step is uh, creating those two indexes, combine it to the dim people and dim uh, date, and combining the information from the category into the this fact table. And later on, we consider is that a good fact table and criticize this. And definitely you can criticize this because there's a lot of things that are not numbers. And one of the criteria we have said, we should really keep fact table to be only numbers. So it's definitely not a clean fact table for now. But for now, that's, let's go one step at a time. What do we do first? First of all, we need to create a table. So, okay, so let's run this one. We don't have a table like that. What happens if we have a, a table like this already created? We just will have to run the drop. Let's see if we have a table. If we have a table, we'll get an error. No, we don't have that. That's why it was successful. If I rerun it, it will tell me I already have a, a table, and then we'll use the Tomcat table command, which will delete and then recreate it. Good. Now we have an empty table. What do we want to do in order to populate this new table fact hours, which is in the DWMOS? DWMOS, let's refresh here the tables, and we should have a clean one, a clean table, meaning empty table. What do we want to add there? What do we want to do there? We really want to transfer all the data all the data that we have in the raw data, which is the hours. And in addition, we want to add all three. Let on can consider maybe removing the other columns. Okay, for example, the month is really unnecessary. The month information already included in the dimension of the date, for example. So that will be a clean one that we really don't need this one. For now, I will keep it. Okay, that's a good exercise. Uh, okay, let's look at what do we do here and what this SQL does. If you look at this command, this command, it's making sure that the table that we just created, it's empty. If we just created it, of course it's an empty, so this command, it's useless for now. Okay, so running it now will not do, do anything because the table already clean. But if the table was populated with information, then this one will empty it out. How does it empty? Therefore, it's simply delete the table and recreate it. Okay, that's a good way to clean up a table if you really want to clean it, totally clean it. If you want to delete specific row in a table, then you should use the delete command. And again, I will leave it as an exercise for you to search how do you use a delete command to delete a specific row in a table. Later on, we have the insert, as usual. We want to insert data into this table. But what do we want to insert? That we go to the select. So we know that this is the important part. What this one does, it's combining some tables, similar to what we did before, and then populating the original table. The only trick I have used here, uh, it's the last part in here. But let's go one step at a time. First one is I'm going to use the p.pk. What does that mean? And I'm going to call it as a pk people. What does that p means? That we should know from previous sections. I named every table, for example, the tables hours, I named as an h. It's an alias, alias for the table in the original or the raw data database, okay? That's what I call as an H. For the task I call, that's also from the original database, it's, I call it P. P is a synonym, or more correctly to say, alias for the task table. 
Some thanks for the P. Pay attention, it's already a data a table that we have created in the process data that's in the EMOS one, okay, the DW EMOS. And that's one I call as a P. And the other one is for the date I call it as a D. So when I see P.PK, that means take the column P key from the table P. Which table is that? The DIM paper. And which, which column do I really want? I really do want the primary key. I do not want the original uh, ID of the employee. So therefore, I'm picking P.PK, and I'm just in the output of the select. I want to call this column to be PK paper. Okay, some things I do for the date. I'm using the primary key from the date, from the date table, and I'm calling that primary key in the new select as a PK date. Later on, I'm using P category. That's again coming from the Task table, T is for the task table, and again, I'm only pulling, pulling from there the category. And finally, and this one, I'm pulling all the columns from the hours table. H is for the hours. I have hours, it's H, the alias is H, so I'm pulling all the other columns. In another word, exactly as I created the table here, I used all the columns from the edge table, and I only added three columns when I created it. So I'm transferring all the data, all the original data, and I'm adding three columns to that table. I'm populating three columns to that table. Very important, it's the wire. The wire does the connections between the tables that I'm using to create the select. Okay, so the Task table, I'm connecting to the edge table using the column test ID, okay? The same things I'm doing for the employee ID. The employee ID in the hours table, it's really the ID in the P table. That's the way we named it. That's also what's in the original table. The date, we're combining with the date uh, columns. Uh, the date, pay attention. The D table, it's a dimensions. In the D, we added a column called date, but this is not the index of the date, okay? That's why we're putting D.PK. Here we go, P.PK. Because here we are interested in the index, but in order to find the index that for every row in the edge, we have to combine those two using the date uh, column. So. The job of the well is connecting, connecting between all the tables using the right columns. After we're connecting between them, the select part tells me which columns do I want. And in this case, those are the columns that I want. The first three, the first three, and all the other columns. The star means give me all the columns in the edge table. Okay, so this one gave me basically all the data. When I get all the data, I can insert it into the fact table. The insert does the insert, but to make sure that the table is empty before I start entering any data into it, that's why I added the truncate. So let's run it. That should take a little while because it's combining some tables. Okay, and don't forget that the H table is quite big, so it will take a little time. I will run the video a little bit, so we don't really have to wait until it finish. Okay, it finished. Okay, we see that we had one million rows. It took it 29 seconds. 29 seconds is not a lot of time, but it is a hell of a lot of time when you have a lot of people using this data and trying to make a report. Now this 29, uh, six or 29 seconds uh, will be saved because we have a table that already have all the data uh, inserted in the right way. And we're gonna continue and improve it as we go along. For now we have the table, so let's look at the data. Uh, we can close this one for now. And we can close this one, we don't need it anymore. And that's the original one. And let's look at the processed one. 
Let's see the fastest one. Here we go. Let's look at what we got. And indeed, we got here the primary key of the employee. That's a totally different than the ID. If you notice, this is the ID. Uh, you can really make sure you can kind of test if it did the job right. You see the first person here did get the same number. The second person did get a different number. Those numbers came from the dim, dim people they mentioned. Okay, so we got the right number. And here we have a primary key for the date. Okay, this is an integer. Okay, it's a, a nice integer. It takes the same space as if we just put one, two, three, four. But at least here we can even, just by looking at the number, uh, we know exactly what the date is. Not that crucial. Uh, so at least those two are definitely done correctly. Moreover, we see that the category was added because we used, we, com we connected the hours table to the task table and we pulled only the category column. So those are the three columns that we added. All the rest are the original hours table. Now you ask yourself, is this is ready? Definitely not. You can say, well, do I really need the ID here? Definitely not. Do I need the month here? Definitely not. Do I need the date? Definitely not. So we can remove those, but that's what we leave for another session. What left now to do is connecting between those three tables. Let's look at the chart again. We see the dim date and the dim people are connected to the fact hours. How do we do it in the easiest way without having to know too much of SQL? You can do a really command with SQL to generate a foreign key. Uh, I will just show you an easy way to, to do it, as I did before in the other sessions. You can go to the diagrams, create the diagrams. And in this diagram, I am going to add those three tables and connect between them. Whoever knows Python very well or knows Django, uh, not that there's really elegant way to do it, but that's beyond the scope of this course. So I'm going to add the hours. I'm going to add the dim dead. And I'm going to add the team people. Those are the three tables that we need to connect between them. How do we connect between them? As we did in previous sessions, I usually like to put kind of what's supposed to be the fact table in the middle. And those two are dimensions. And again, this one is not really a clean fact table as it's supposed to be and we'll deal with that later on. For now, I want to link the primary key of the people with the P key people. If you remember for previous session, I said that the primary key, let me just finish that one. Now that I have combined, it's one too many. And this is really functioning as a foreign key for this column. In other words, I have a foreign key defined between this column to this column. Or in other words, and what the meaning of that is, you cannot have any index here or any number here that doesn't exist in the team paper. Some things I would do is to date. I take this one and put it right on here. And you automatically just make sure, as I mentioned in previous sessions, make sure that you didn't, by mistake, put it on the wrong column. And it does the work. Now I have those three tables are linked exactly as we had it in the schema. If I save this diagram, let's call it ETL2. And 
If I save it as it saves, he recognizes the diagram recognizes that I created the links. He does all the SQL necessary to combine all three tables together. If I do yes, he will combine all three together. Remind you from previous session, if I try to delete a table, for example, if I would try to delete the team paper, okay, it would give me an error. Why? Because there's a link between the team paper to the fact. I have to delete the fact table first, and then I can delete the dimensions. Deleting the dimension without deleting the fact, it won't allow me because there is a definition of one to many relationship between those tables. Let's conclude uh, this part of the of a building kind of a mini cube. Again, this is not this classical uh, 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 fact table. I should do a lot of other works to make sure that everything will be a to be here a numbers only. I don't keep anything that it's not a number just to make sure that this is going to work very fast. We we'll leave it for other sessions and I want to make some other comments as we do that. Thank you.